Good morning, Periscope. Happy Friday. How is everyone doing? Good morning, good morning. I hope everybody's having a good day. Hey, good morning, Angela. Good morning, Sister in Christ 901 Holmes. Thank you, Kay Brax, for inviting followers. Good morning, Kingdom Warrior 3, Diamond, Nanette. Hey, good morning, Kim. Good morning, Nishia. Good morning, Tonia B. Steffi, Derby Line. Good morning, God bless you. Hey, Lysandra, Lucille, No Need, at Destined to Win, Phoenicia. Good morning from Philly. Good morning, Bernice. Thank you, Derby Line, for inviting followers. Good morning, Wonderfully Made. Good morning, Crystal. Uh, OCU9, New Timer. What's up? Thanks for joining. Eric M. Wright. Thank you guys for inviting followers. Ah, oh, hey, Mom. Good morning, Apostle K. My spiritual mother and uh, mentor that I talk about all the time, who is the reason I am sane, saved, and sanctified, has joined the broadcast. So, good morning. Apostle Camila, thank you for joining. I love you so much. Everybody, please honor her. She is the reason that I am alive today. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you for joining. How is everyone doing? Oh, I love you. Uh, hello, Jorge. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, Cheryl. Hello, Clinton. Uh, Matt. Uh, where do I attend church? I go to All Nations Worship Assembly. Oh, oh, hold on. Got to block someone. All Nations Worship Assembly on 6028 South Champlain, um, where Drs. Matthew and Camila Stevenson are the pastors there. They are amazing. Good morning. Good morning. How's everyone doing? All right. So I just found out that I have a meeting. So that's why I'm a little late. I have a meeting at work first thing this morning I was preparing for. So it's going to have to be a kind of a short periscope this morning. But what I'm going to do is since this is day 11 of our 25 days of wisdom, thank you guys so much for continuously joining. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and set up kind of what we're going to talk about over the next three to four days. So today's periscope was titled, What Are You Saying? So I know we've been, you know, taking these 25 days to truly position ourselves to become prepared to finish out 2015 strong and also to be in a place of alignment and wisdom to really succeed and do well in 2016. You know, as I tell you guys almost on a daily basis, it's my dream and desire to see people walking in the fullness of wisdom because the Bible tells us that people perish for their lack of understanding. So the reason that we're joining together for these 25 days of wisdom is so that we can begin to position ourselves as wise people so that we can succeed in 2016. So I want to talk about our words for the next few days and the words, the way that our words have such a great impact on our life. Oh my gosh, I do not understand. Sorry, block party this morning. I don't know where all these people are coming from. So what we have to understand about our words is I think that um, because we live in a world where words are so prevalent, in a world where we can communicate more often than ever before, express ourselves more often than ever before, I think that words have, kind, have kind of become a currency that we just take for granted and we don't truly um, understand or have revelation anymore about the power of our words and what they can mean in terms of our life and how, um, you know, what even the consequences of our words are. You know, one thing I think we don't realize is the things that often happen, they happen the way that we say they will. They happen the way we think they will. You know, our words are obviously, um, you know, a consequence of the way we think. So we've talked about the importance of, you know, our thoughts and how our thoughts affect our life. But, you know, our thoughts also shape our words. So it's so important that we begin to, um, you know, just really understand the consequences of what we say. You know, we live in what I'd like to call a word centered world. You know, it's so possible now to talk all the time. There's communication more than there ever has been before. You know, whether that's from texting, whether that's from calling, whether that's from social media, there's even more social places now in the world to gather than ever before, like restaurants and malls. We receive more words. You know, studies show that we receive and intake more words than ever before. You know, whether that's from the TV, radio, YouTube, 
YouTube or music. So all of these things, you know, we are constantly throughout the day bombarded by words, by what we're listening to, by what we're watching, by what we're taking in. And throughout the day, you know, whether it's texting um, and communicating that way, whether it's speaking face to face, whether it's posting on social media, now more than ever before, we have the opportunity to speak and to hear. So what I want you guys to understand is almost now more than any before in time, our words, we have to begin to understand the consequences of our words and the consequences of what we are saying. So my scripture today comes from Proverbs 18, 20, and the Amplified Version says this, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it and indulge it will eat its fruit and bear the consequences of their words. The Message Version puts it like this, Words kill and words give life. They're either poison or fruit. You choose. So right there, the message version tells us that we have the choice of what the consequences of our words will be. They'll either bring life or they'll either bring death. Now, you know, a lot of people may say that's pretty deep. You know, life or death, that sounds like a big deal. But it is a big deal. The way you speak, the way you think, all of these will affect the outcome of your life. You know, if you're around positive people, what you'll begin to learn about people people who are constantly speaking positivity, constantly speaking life, is that they'll have more positive relationships because even words have the ability to tear down relationships, tear down other people. You'll notice that even people who have more positive words have a better self-image and are more confident people because our words affect the way we think about ourselves, what we speak over ourselves. You'll see that positive people, even though the thing, the interesting thing is that positive and negative people usually both both have the same amount of negative things happen to them, but a positive person, one who has right perspectives and one who speaks positively and speaks life, they will actually be happier people because what they're able to do is it's all about perspective. So when something negative happens, they don't open their mouth and begin to speak death. They don't open their mouth and begin to speak negativity, but through their words, they actually are able to turn, you know, the consequences around. They're actually able to turn the situation around. You know, they say the silver lining is there, you have to look for it. And they also say that what you look for, you'll find. So if you're a person who is extremely negative and you want to see the bad in everything, you'll find it. There's plenty of bad in the world. So if you want to go around looking for negativity and looking for bad in the world, you'll be able to find it. But if you're a person who wants to find positivity, if wants to find goodness, you will find it. You know, the Bible encourages us to think on everything that is good, everything that is right, everything that is pure, everything that is worthy, everything that is lovely. And I think the reason that the Bible, you know, even encourages us to think like that is because it, we, they understand, you know, that we are the production. We are the consequences of the way we think and our words are the consequences of what we think. You know, every word before you speak it is first a thought. So we have to begin to understand the importance of our thoughts and the importance of our words. And, you know, I don't even want to over the next few days as we're learning about the importance of our words, I don't even just want to look at it from a biblical perspective. Perspective. Obviously, everything should be have a biblical foundation. But the, what, what I love about the Bible and science, you know, so many people are afraid to mix the Bible with science. But if people really took the time, you know, to study and research, what we find is that science a lot of times actually proves and further justifies what we've already been told in the Bible. So I also want to look at this from a scientific perspective over these next few days so that we can really understand there is a true consequence of our words, not even just in the spiritual realm, but in the physical realm as well. So I was reading a study this morning in Psychology Today talking about the power Power of our words and the power of negativity. So I want to read you guys really quick some of the findings so that you can see that even this is not just um, some made up biblical idea, but this is something that not only has biblical foundation, but also has scientific proof and finding to back it. So this is what they found in psychology today. They said that if you vocalize your negativity or even slightly frown when you say the word no, more stress chemicals will be released not only into your brain, but to those who are listening to your words as well. Not only will the speaker um, even... Um 
you know, experience greater release of stress chemicals, but it says that the listener will experience increased anxiety and irritability, thus undermining the positivity. So in fact, what it said is just hanging around negative people will make you a more negative person. So right there, we see that when you speak negativity or even when you listen to it, there is a stress chemical that is released in your brain that is um, that is even, what they found is that it's even linked to depression, it's linked to sadness and they even found that it's linked to suicide that people who have depression and people who are suicidal they said they have a greater increase of this chemical in their brain so we have to understand that this is not when we say oh your words are important when the bible says your words have the power of life and death that this isn't just something cute we say or something funny that we say but it is literally has the power of life and death because these chemicals you know show up and are in an increased um, even state in the people who are depressed, in the people who have psychotic issues, and in people, um, you know, even they said it's an increased symptom in those who murder others, in those who kill others, and in those who commit suicide. So people who say that they struggle with depression, a lot of times one of the first ways they'll begin to treat this is they'll begin to look at their thought patterns, and they'll begin to listen to their speech, because they found one of the most successful ways of treating depression, um, treating sadness, and treating suicide is not not just medicine, even though that sometimes can help. It's a true study in beginning to shift the way that people think and shift the way that people talk. The study also found this, that fear provoking words like poverty, illness, and death stimulate the brain in negative ways and also release negative toxins and chemicals. Um, Barbara Frederick. I'm sorry, Barbara Fredrickson, who's actually one of the founders of psychology today, if you follow them at all, discovered that if we need to that we need to generate at least three positive thoughts and feelings for each expression of negativity. So what she found is that every time you speak some, unfortunately, our brain is more reactive to negative thoughts than it is to positive thoughts. It's more reactive to negative words than it is to positive words. And this is why so many times we've dug a hole so deep deeply in society, so deeply in conversations, and so deeply in relationships that in order to dig our way out, we have to speak, they say, science has proved that you have to speak three positive things to combat for one negative thing. So we have to begin to understand, this is why it's so important that we begin to bridle our tongue. This is why it is so important that we begin to really think about the words we speak before we say them. And I think this is why we're seeing a decrease in society, in morality, this is why we're seeing an increase in violence, an increase in depression, an increase in suicide, an increase in sadness. And if you even looked, there has been a deterioration in relationships. The divorce rate is at an all time high. And if we begin to ask ourselves why relationships are more destructive than ever, why society is more destructive than ever, why relationships are failing more than ever, why people are more violent than they've ever been, more depressed than they've ever been, more suicides than there have ever been, I really believe that it is due to our words and due to our thoughts. Because Barbara Fredrickson went on to say this, if you express fewer than three positive things and are speaking more negativity into a relationship, then your business relationships and your personal relationships are more likely to fail. So we see that an increased failure in relationships, an increased failure in marriages, an increased failure in business relationships is due to the fact that we are such a negative and critical society. Bullying is at an all-time high. Tearing people down on social media is at an all-time high. So this is what I want to, you know, this is why I want to take the next few days to truly begin to talk about our words, the importance of our words, and the importance of releasing positivity. Because the Bible not only tells us that the power of death and life are in our tongue, but we also see that scientific study and research backs this up in proves this to be true from a chemical perspective in our brain and also linked to depression and suicide. So what I want us to begin to understand over these next few days in that this is a big deal and that if we want to 
truly see our 2015 ended well. And if we want to start 2016 off in power, start 2016 off aligned in the right way, and we want to have a successful year in 2016, what we need to begin to do now in 2015 is begin to shift the way we think and shift the way we speak. So I want to take these next few days throughout the 25 days of wisdom. You know, if you're just now joining, um, what we've been doing is starting December 1st through December 25th, we are embarking on 25 days of wisdom. So every morning I'll be on here talking about how to become a wise person because the Bible tells us that my people perish for a lack of understanding. So over these next 25 days, you know, and throughout, we've really begun to position ourselves to become a wise people so that we can have great excellence in 2016. Because I think what has begun to happen as I've been in conversation with people about how 2015 went, it didn't go the way they wanted it to. They didn't accomplish a lot of what they thought they would accomplish. They didn't see the success they wanted to. And I think it's because we lack wisdom in how to accomplish everything that God has called us to accomplish. So one of the things that I want to take the next few days to talk about, because it's so vital and so important, is our words and the consequences of our words, because the Bible says that the power of death in life lie in the tongue. So I hope you guys see, you know, today, I just wanted to come on really quickly and begin to lay the foundation of why it's so important that we begin to take the time to talk about the importance of our words. So what I want to start, you know, these next few days off with is a challenge. So I want to give you guys a challenge today because what I want you guys to understand is this, um, th- this next few days as we begin to talk about the importance for words, this is for everybody. This is for women. This is for men. This is for young. This is for old. This is for everybody. Unless you are a person who doesn't speak or doesn't hear here, then oh, maybe this maybe this isn't relevant to you. But if you're a person that ever speaks or ever hears, then this is relevant to you. So I want you guys today to really challenge yourself, and I'm going to be doing this challenge as well to begin to write down. Um, I think that what we what we would begin to see is that we are actually more negative than we think we are. So I want to challenge everybody throughout today to begin to write down and tally every negative thing you say, every negative word that comes from your mouth or every negative thought that you speak because the consequences of these negative thoughts and negative words are death and we need to begin to take this very seriously. So that's my challenge to you guys today on this Friday is to begin to really take notice of what you say. You know, the Bible says that we will be accountable for every word spoken. So we have to begin to take, you know, this into account. And, you know, if we want to know why our life sucks, why our life is negative, why things aren't going the way they are, It's often because of self-fulfilling prophecy. Things happen the way we say they will. Things happen the way we think they will. So I just want to challenge everybody today on, on, on Friday, today, the end of the week, to begin to really take into account and really just extend your awareness of what you say and what you think throughout the day, even if it's in a joking manner. Also, what you post on social media, on Instagram, on Facebook, what you say in texts, and what you say on phone calls. So this is just the beginning of our study on the power of words throughout these next few days, the 25 days of wisdom. But my challenge to you guys today, and I'll be doing the challenge as well, is to begin to watch and monitor and really pay attention to everything you think and say, both verbally and even on social media and everything also. It's one thing to monitor what you say, but we also need to understand that if words have the power of life and death, then this power of life and death also can affect what we are hearing. So I also want you guys to be cognitive of what you are listening to and what you're hearing throughout the rest of the day. What do you allow yourself to listen to? What do you allow yourself to watch? This is so important. If you are someone who speaks positively or wants to be a positive person but is listening to negativity all day, you'll see that that also begins to affect the way you are. I mean, just the study that we were reading, you know, it said that the listener will also experience increased anxiety, irritability, and increased stress chemicals. So listening just as well as speaking it will affect you. 
So that's my challenge for you guys today um, is to begin to really measure your words, to begin to really measure the negativity in your life, and, the, and we will begin to talk about the consequences of this. So if it's your first time joining, my name is Monica Vandeneed, and I am the founder of wisdomisthenewblack.com. It is my desire, goal, dream, and life calling to see people raised up in wisdom, walking in the fullness of who God created them to be, because I believe that if more people would rise up and be who God called them to be, they would be solutions to the problems of this world and that the problems of this world would cease to exist and more people would know Jesus. So that's my heart, dream, and desire. You can follow me on Facebook at Wisdom is the New Black. My personal Facebook is Monica Vandeneen. Uh, please follow on Periscope. Um, invite your friends. Invite your followers to take part in this important, um, you know, these next few days where we're going to be talking about words and their importance. Um, if you love people, you want them to have a good 2016, so invite them to come partake in this. Um, you know, you can also follow me on Instagram, Wisdom is the New Black. And then if you go to my website, wisdomisthenewblack.com, my link for the website is in my bio. Um, what you can find on there is articles about this stuff. I also have a 21-day detox um, that I'm selling on there as well. So you can go on there and purchase my 21-day detox. It's a negativity detox that will help you begin to detoxify yourself from negative thinking. It's basically like a 21 one day devotional every day there's scripture and a challenge to begin to help you um, think more positively so I hope you guys have a great rest of your Friday I'll be praying for you guys I love you guys and I will see you guys tomorrow for day 12 of our 25 days of wisdom thank you so much for joining I'll be doing um, the challenge today as well and then tomorrow when we get on um, day 12 of our 25 days of wisdom for sunrise scope in the morning I can't wait to hear how your challenges went today and I'll be sharing how mine went as well. So I love you guys. Have an awesome day. Uh, shout out to my spiritual mom again, Apostle Camila. I love you. Thank you so much for joining and inviting your followers and being my mentor and saving my life. <laughs> I love you. Everybody have a great day. Bye.